Hello and welcome back again. Welcome to this final mini video guitar lesson in this marathon of video guitar lessons that we've done in this e-course. So I congratulate you for getting this far and I really hope you've enjoyed everything you've done so far. And of course, you know, you know by now that we've learned a variety of skills. We've done everything from basic stuff like learning how to tune the guitar. You know, we've done chords, we've done strumming pattern, finger picking, we've done bar chords, blue scale, minor scale, rock and roll, uh, power chords, funk, you know, we've, I've tried to give you a whole range of stuff that will give you a rounded um, understanding of how to use the instrument and, and it will give you a basis for you to go and play all the songs that you want to play. Okay, so now this brings us to this lesson, the final lesson, and today I'm going to teach you to improvise. And really, in many ways, this is the most um, exciting and the most special lesson, because what I'm going to do today is give you a lot of the responsibility. Um, because in case you don't know what improvising means, it means to make it up as you go along. So what we're going to be playing today is nothing that's already been rehearsed or already been written. What you're going to be doing is making it up as you go along, on the spot, ad-libbing as they call it. Um, now, Here's the key understanding, so listen up, I want you to get this. We're going to use the minor scale as a basis um, to work from. So let me just refresh your memory. You should know this minor scale in the key of A, A minor, but I'll just play it to you again so you can see. <laughs> Okay, so if you need to stop the video and just quickly remind yourself of that, I suggest you do it now. Now here's the thing, you can play any of those notes in any order and they will always sound good. I know that might say, sound like a strange thing to say, but you don't have to play them in order. Because when we start to improvise, we can choose those notes because what we've got there is a palette of notes. And you can play them in any order and they'll always sound good. So let me just give you an example. I'm going to choose random notes from that scale. They must be from the scale, but um, let, me, let me show you what I mean. Okay, so all those notes were taken from the minor scale, but I was playing them in any order that I wish to play them. Okay, so if you want to stop the video now and try that, and use the minor scale and play any of the notes in any order, then that is a good place to start to learn improvising. Now the next thing I want to explain to you is that when you improvise, it's rather like when you talk, because you're going to be using the guitar to, as an expression to kind of talk, to express yourself through the notes. And I know that sounds a little bit airy-fairy, but if you just bear with me, I think you'll, you'll, you'll know what I mean. Because when you talk, you don't talk constantly without a break. Well, I do, but most people in a normal conversation um, have pauses. For example, you'll say a few words, and then you'll pause and then you'll carry on talking and then there'll be another pause and that is how um, a conversation naturally flows and it's the same with the guitar when you're playing a solo so for example we don't just want to play continuous notes we want to do um, have little breaks like this <laughs> see I was playing in little phrases like sentences then and it made it sound a lot more um, a lot warmer a lot more sensitive didn't it so the other thing um, that you can practice is vibrato you might have noticed me wiggling the string a little bit like this and really that's all it is it's just wiggle you're just using your finger to pull the string gently backwards and forwards and you'll notice that singers do that when they hold a big note they, they kind of wobble the note and it's exactly the same on the guitar so you can practice this by moving through the scale and pra practicing vibrato on each note so let me just demonstrate what I mean so on all the way through the scale and then you can apply that to your improvising so not only are you choosing random notes and putting pauses you're also using vibrato on the end of the phrases almost like a full stop on the end of a sentence like this <laughs> Okay. 
Okay, good. I hope that makes sense. Now, there's other ways of um, making it more um, expressive as well, because when we talk, we don't always talk loudly. Sometimes we talk quietly. Sometimes we do talk loud, and it's the same with the guitar. So you can play soft notes, and you can play loud notes. And when you mix them up, it, it, it makes your playing so much more interesting, so much more expressive. <laughs> Okay, so you can really get into this, okay. And also, um, like we learned in the previous lesson when I was teaching you funk, um, I showed you that you can play long smooth notes or short sharp notes by um, releasing the pressure from, from the string, like that, by pressing down and then releasing the note. So you can do that with your improvising as well. So all of a sudden, we're not just playing smooth notes, we're now playing short sharp notes as well. Okay, so now you can begin to mix all this in and your playing gets more interesting and more interesting. Now the other thing um, is hammers and pull-offs. You already know how to do that because we learned that in one of the very first lessons. Um, and also slides, which is when you slide your finger from one note to another. Like that. So it's dead simple. You're literally just holding down a note. Um, make sure the notes that you choose are correct notes from the minor scale. Okay, so, you know, have a little practice on that. And the other thing um, you can do is to bend the notes, which is, for example, if you were to hold the third string at fret seven with your third finger, and what I suggest you do is use these fingers on the third string to help push, and you're gonna give it a pluck. <laughs> bend the note up and down. Now, it's easier said than done. That'll probably take a bit of practice for you to get that sounding nice and smooth. So, when we combine all this together, we're using the minor scale, we're choosing random notes, um, we're playing in phrases, we're using pauses, we're using vibrato, we're using hammers, we're using slides, we're using bends, we're playing loud, we're playing quiet, we're playing smooth notes, and we're playing short, sharp notes. When you combine all that together, you can really have a lot of fun as a lead guitarist. Um, so let me give you one more example of a bit of improvising, and I'll try and vary it as much as I can so you can, you can see what I'm doing. Okay, now here's the thing. Here's the other thing I want you to really understand. When you do this on your own, in a way it kind of sounds meaningless because it's out of context. What makes it sound um, better is if you've got some background music behind you. For example, if you've got a friend who plays guitar, what you can do is to get him to strum some chords along, uh, like we're in the key of A minor, so you could get him to strum an A minor bar chord like this. And then you could improvise over the top. Or, you know, if you're more sophisticated and you've already got a band and, you know, or if you've got a friend who plays keyboards, then that's brilliant. And then your soloing will sound even more brilliant with all the backing music behind you.